What's up, tipsies? Ah. Oh yeah, that's right. I got the merch. Hey guys. It is Twyla the Tipsy Gypsy, and yes, that is right. I have merchandise. I have merchandise, um, which I will put a link in the description below um, if anyone wants it. Basically, if you like your drinks, if you like your travel, and if you like giving tips to friends after you're done traveling, a Tipsy Gypsy t-shirt or tank top is just what you need. But Keep in mind, I believe the sizes do run a little small. Um, this, yeah, it's, it's a little snug. Like maybe some girls like it this snug. I am like on the fence. Anyway, <laughs> I love it though. Thin material, really soft and silky, really cute. I like it. Anyway, um, moving on to what this episode is really about. This episode is details, details, details. Details on how I went about moving temporarily to Scotland. But good news first, I found a flat. Wow! No, <laughs> I found a flat, guys. I am super, super duper happy that I found a flat. I found a flat within, within a week's time, so thank the Lord for that. So, um, yeah, I found it. And here's a little, here's a couple pictures. I'm not gonna show you the whole house because I don't think that's right to really, you know, show this woman's house to everybody. But I'll show you my room and my bathroom and the outside. Um, Cause there's a little surprise outside. Take a look. So, this is my apartment building. That's the entrance right there. It's pretty awesome. And there is a park across the street from the apartment building. Oh, and the best part about the apartment building, the best part of the apartment building is this. <laughs> so yeah, so that's my flat, um, what I could show you of it. Um, and my flatmate and a half, a little dog named Bling. So cute. But yeah, cute apartment. Slightly creepy circumstances outside, but that's okay. It's okay. There have been no problems other than howling wind every now and again. Adds to the creepiness. But from there, let's get down to the deets. Because that's what you're here for. All right. Detail numero uno. Um, how I transitioned from getting here to finding a place. And that is, I used Airbnb. I used an Airbnb, um, which was cheaper than even some of the hostels that I was looking at here in Edinburgh. So thank the Lord. Um, so I went with an Airbnb. I booked it for one week and was like, all right, I'm going to hit it hard trying to find a flat in that one week. I also decided instead of doing a um, looking for a flat on my own, like my own flat, my own apartment, um, no roommates or anything. Instead of that, I decided to go with trying to find someone who was looking for a roommate or flatmate as they would call it. Um, 
one, it's cheaper, and two, oftentimes, if you get the right flatmate or mates, because there are places where they have multiple, um, you have a built-in friendship, built-in network. I didn't exactly get that, but I did get a flatmate, so it's awesome. And so that's what I decided to do. I decided to use the Airbnb while I searched for a flat to live in or someone who was looking for a flatmate. And I basically decided to go ahead and do a flat share, as they would call it. So, and detail number two, the flat, how I found a flat share. And that's the flat share sites. I basically started Googling everything and the two of the sites that I used, one is Spare Room, that was the biggest one that I used. Um, and the other one is Easy Roommate. So Spare Room dot, I don't even know if that's dot com. It might be dot com and then slash UK or whatever. But all I know is if you put it in um, Google, I'm sure it'll come up. Spare Room. The other one, Easy Roommate. And then they have a few others, as well as Facebook. Facebook is another good way to go about finding a place. You type in in the search bar, you know, like flat share, flats, apartments in whatever city. And next thing you know, you find these groups that, you know, people are looking for places to stay or people are looking for places to, or to rent out to others. So that's always a good plan of action is to go through Facebook. Now let's talk about the seedier side of these sites. Um, beware that some people are trying to scam you and these sites don't really have a way to um, to detract from scammers coming on their site. So there are people who are going to try and scam you. Always, 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 always contact the people through the websites until you feel comfortable enough to give them your email address or your phone number. Um, a lot of them, like a lot of them, a lot of people prefer to communicate over here through via text or whatever than through these websites. But basically, you got to kind of test it out. So I put my new number on the website and that only people who were actual members of the website, premium members, could see my number to, um, to text me. And people have texted me, but um, they didn't have an ad. They just text me out of the blue like, I have an apartment. Um, give me your email address and I'm like warning sign like warning warning Will Robinson something's not quite right so <laughs> just like so I don't I don't do that um, also people like to use it as a dating app like I guess my ad for looking for an apartment was so bomb that I was getting dudes trying to hook up with me um, through text they're just like well you know you seem like really cool and you know your ad it seemed cool and I'm just like really and then one dude was like yeah I'm married like I don't talk to married men well I'm really unhappy that's not my freaking problem <laughs> that you're unhappy nah nah homie nah so just beware of creepers on some of these sites but other than that it actually works. I myself found my flat through um, spareroom.com. Um, the lady who I live with, the older woman, she saw my ad, you know, tapped that she had interest. And so I looked at her ad and looked at her profile. She seemed like a decent human being. And so I went ahead and messaged her and we messaged each other back and forth until we were comfortable comfortable enough to start um, exchanging phone numbers and then texting or phone calls through that. Um, she's a nice lady. Very authentic Scottish accent, so um, I have to listen in really closely as to what she's saying. Um, it's not exactly what I imagined, you know. I almost imagined... Cause there's a lot of flat shares where there's uh, 
multiple people in one flat, you know, like a like a house. There's like some of these uh, flats are like homes, big homes, like for people with like a husband and wife with a couple of kids, you know, they'll, they'll be like a four bedroom flat or something. And so a lot of people, um, a lot of young people get together, young professionals, um, and rent a room in a flat. And so you'll have like four, five, six, seven, eight roommates, depending on how big the flat is. And so that's what I was kind of hoping for. Like, I was ready to revert back to my college days. Instead, I kind of, I kind of got another mom. I mean, apparently it's what I needed. <laughs> apparently it's what I needed because I believe everything happens for a reason. But yeah, I basically got another mom. So, anyway, <laughs> moving on to detail number three. All right, detail number three. Um... That would be banking. Um, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with the whole banking situation here, but back home in the States, I did some research, a lot of research really, on what banks would be best for international travel. There was one bank that I found and then another bank that a friend was telling me about. So, the bank that I found that's best for international travel is Charles Schwab. I like to call my bank account Chuck. So Chuck um, is pretty great because one, they have zero ATM fees because they have no ATMs throughout the world and that's kind of not fair to charge ATM fees if they don't have any ATMs for you to find. So they don't charge ATM fees and if you ever are charged ATM fees anywhere in the world, they will reimburse you the next month which I thought was pretty freaking awesome. And they don't charge international. They don't charge foreign fees. They don't charge exchange or conversion fees. And the conversion, which I don't know if it's through Chuck or through Visa, because the debit card is a Visa. Like, I don't know if how they do it. But um, the conversion rate is pretty darn close to the conversion rate that you will Google. You'll Google like USD to G GBP. <laughs> Great Britain pound. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the pound to USD or, or US dollar to pound, whatever. When you Google that, it will. I'd say that Chuck Charles Schwab gives me pretty darn close, maybe. Ch change it's different by change and that's it so that's pretty awesome um, and uh, basically all I did was just let them know that um, I would be going abroad now hopefully they're cool with me being abroad for more than 60 days or whatever because yeah the guy told me I, I called to make sure and he told me that um, basically they're okay with it. They're just learning my spending habits or whatever and whatnot. But I did tell them how long I'd be here. Um, but yeah, they're a really great bank. Um, also, one of my travel guru friends who travels all over the world all the time, uh, her preferred bank is Citibank. She says that they don't charge foreign um foreign fees so that's awesome what I don't know is is whether they will charge you because you know how banks will charge you it if you don't have a, a specific amount or more in the bank or if you don't have direct deposit in that bank I don't know if Citibank has that but I know for a fact that Chuck does not charge you you could have a dollar in there and they're okay with that um, and you could have no direct deposit coming in from your job, and they're okay with that. So, Chuck is the bomb. That's all I can say. I can't officially vouch for Citibank, but I do know that they don't have foreign transaction fees. So, that's home banks. Uh, next up, international banks. <clears throat> Okay, so international banks, this is the part that I'm having trouble with. They want you to have proof of residence. They want you to have um, a uh, 
permanent residence visa or a temporary residence visa kind of thing. They want, or a work permit, something. They want some kind of something to show proof that you live here. They also would like, you know, maybe they would like a bill with your name on it. Um, problem with that is if you're doing a flat share uh, and you don't have um, any mail coming to you because your flat share, especially if bills are included like mine, um, I'm just paying my rent and, and she with my rent pays the utilities. So my name isn't on anything. And um, I was talking to her about it and she said that, that was even hard with her children. When her children became a certain age, um, they didn't have bills coming in because she's the mom, she was still paying bills. And so it was even hard for them to get a bank account. So a traditional bank, definitely not. Then I was trying to go with one of the newer online bank banking um, sites that are great for nomads. Um, but still, there's one is called Revolut, and I was really down to use this, and I was so excited and ready to go, and I was trying to set it up, and just today I found out that no, I need to have some kind of proof, some kind of permit, visa, something. So I don't know when anyone is going to come up with an international bank for people who bounce around from place to place. Like they don't make it easy for you to be a nomad. So. Um, if anything changes on that front where I can find um, an international bank, I'll let you all know. Um, the, one of the reasons why I want the international bank is because it would be every time I use my debit card here, I have to sign. I can't use my pen or whatever. It's just slightly annoying. And then also it would be easier. It'll probably be easier to transfer um, my rent money to and from my account to my um, flatmate slash landlord's account if I had a bank here but unfortunately that's not gonna happen so hopefully Chuck doesn't give me any problems otherwise she's getting cash every month that's that and to the last detail all right so the last detail is cell phone basically what I did was If I wouldn't have gotten this stupid jetpack thing, I was bamboozled by the sales rep. Um, I was super busy in a hurry. I had a dentist appointment, and so I was hurrying up trying to get my cell phone set up, and he convinced me to get this jetpack mobile hotspot thing that also doubles as a, uh, like a battery pack, extra battery charger. I didn't need that thing, and I didn't realize that it came with a two-year contract. If it, if I'd have known it came with a two-year contract, I definitely wouldn't have got it because I knew that I was eventually going to move. <sighs> anyway, um, so <laughs> I, because of that, I wasn't able to cancel my phone completely. So what I did was I suspended my services. I suspended my Verizon services. Now, um, I could have paid off my phone and then went ahead and um, un got it unlocked and then put the SIM card, um, a UK SIM card, within the phone to get services. But I really, 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 really wanted this Google Pixel 2 because of the footage that the video footage and photos that it takes. It takes gorgeous video and gorgeous photos. It would probably be more gorgeous if I knew a little bit more about photography, but forgive, I'm an amateur. But So I wanted this phone badly. And so I paid for this phone in full so that it was unlocked so that I could put a SIM card in it and use it. And so that's what I did. I got a SIM card, it's 15 pounds, which is maybe $20. Um, so it's like $20 a month, six gigs of data, um, and unlimited phone calls and text within the UK, of course. Um, and that's what I got. 
and it's been working out perfectly so that I can do Facebook live videos and I can um, like I can be connected everywhere that I go and, but also there's Wi-Fi just about everywhere in Europe but it's nice to have um, and then as far as messaging my family because you know this package doesn't include international phone calls and texts so I use WhatsApp. Um, if you don't have WhatsApp, get WhatsApp because it's amazing. You can make phone calls, regular phone calls, you can do video chat, and you can do text messaging um, all through just a regular data plan. Like not a phone plan, not an actual phone plan, but just your data. Just like if you were on Facebook or something like that. Um, it's a fantastic app. It is how I communicate with my parents so they can see me. Also, another amazing app to use is Marco Polo. Marco Polo is a, like a video text app. Like, you know, sometimes you just don't have the time or energy to use them thumbs to type out a message, especially if you have a lot to say. Instead, what you do is you do a video message. It's video messaging. It's not, it can be live, but it's not necessarily live. Like you're not talking back and forth to each other in a live video feed. It's you leave a video message like, hey, good morning. And that's it. And then your friends, your significant other, your family will wake up and they'll get, see that they have a message and it'll be like, good morning. And so then they can respond back with, good morning, Twyla. I hope you had a good night last night. And then you come back, oh, I did, blah, blah, blah. And then you can, you can do different fun filters. You can do different voices like, um, like you sucked in helium or a macho voice or a robot voice. You can type text across it. So it's really cute. And it's just between who you want it to be with. It's not public or anything like that. It's just to your mom or just to whatever. Or if you want your whole family, you put in your whole family. And so um, myself, my mom, my dad, and my brother, we're all on one together. And so if we want to send a message to all of us, we'll do the family message. So it's really cute. So that's what you can do. Make sure your phone is either paid off and unlocked or get a phone that's unlocked. Use a SIM card. And then um, you don't have to get international calling or whatever because God only knows how expensive that is. All you need is to get WhatsApp and Marco Polo and you're all set. So those are the details as to how I'm doing this. Um, if you have any questions, anything you, that I've forgotten you want me to cover, go ahead drop it down below in the comments and I will answer them or create a video for them. Okay? Okay. All right, guys. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to follow me on this journey, hit that red button down below and then don't forget to hit the bell because if you hit the bell, you get notifications every time I drop a video. So, um, it was great talking with you guys. All right, stay tipsy, my friends. <laughs>